so maybe we should start. Okay, uh, okay. so we are very happy to have today with us uh, Fei Yang, who will uh, tell us about protected Hello. spin characters, link invariants, and exact WKB. So okay. if you have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask uh, whatever you want to ask or write in the chat. Uh, okay. Take it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak here. And thank you everyone for coming to my talk. I hope you are doing well. Um, today, I will talk about uh, protected spin characters, link invariants, and exact WKB. Sorry. Uh, as an outlook, in this talk, I will describe the construction of a new link invariant for links L in a three manifold M, taking the form of a surface cross a real line. And I use quotation mark for invariant because as we will see later on, this quantity is actually having some wall crossing behaviors. And in particular, this construction unifies the following two computations, namely the computation of protected spin characters counting BPS states with spin for line defects in 40 equals two theories of class S, and also, it computes well-known linking variants in a new way. So the majority of the talk will be based on my joint work with Andy Nitsky, uh, where so we already have a paper out in JHAP, and hopefully two more coming relatively soon. And near the end of my talk, I will also describe some further applications of this construction based on some ongoing discussion uh, with Greg Moore and Andy Nitsky and I should also acknowledge David de Gaiotto, as we have learned recently, he had also been independently thinking about a similar problems. So we're in communication and are trying to combine forces on this topic. Okay, so let me start with some motivation. Uh, the main player in this talk will be LAN operators. And like other non-local operators, LAN operators are an important thing to study in quantum field theories. Uh, as a historically famous example, in 4D gauge theories, Wilson lines and Duft lines are important observables for studying phases of the gauge theories. And for example, the Wilson loop will appear an area law in a confining phase. So therefore, it could be used as an order, order parameter for confinement. And more recently, um, there has been many systematic study on line operators and their correlation functions. And people found that they really capture the global structure of quantum field theories. Um, and I, I put some references here, but I think there are more. And I apologize if I forget some of the references. Uh, in particular, you could have gauge theories with different uh, gauge groups and different Lagrangians, but with the same gauge algebras. And this difference could be captured by the allowed set of line operators in the theory. And more dramatically, LAN operators affect local dynamics of the theory competitive at a circle, simply because if you wrap a LAN operator around the circle, it will become a local operator in the competitive at theory. And then the last point of, uh, point of view is that if we consider LAN defects, which modeling the infinitely heavy particles in your theory, it could tell us information about the back spectrum. And I will come back to this point um, um, in the middle of my talk. So today, I will focus in on specifically land defects in 40 equals 2 theories. Namely, we consider 40 equals 2 theory with insertion of a supersymmetric land defects extending along time direction and sitting at the origin of the spatial R3. One could think of them uh, in, for example, in supersymmetric gauge theories, they could be viewed as a SUSI version of the wilson duft lines. However, you could also generalize such defects to even non lagarian theories. And this, of course, has been studied by many people. And it might be uh, not so easy to get a grasp of um, what kind of object are they. However, a um, simple example happens in abelian gauge theories, where the supersymmetric land effects are simply labeled by electromagnetic charge gamma and a parameter, uh, which I call zeta, uh, which labels the preserved supercharges by this land effect. And as a simple example, if you consider 40 equals to U1 theory 
and take gamma to be purely electric. And then you could write down this land effects very explicitly as uh, the following supersymmetrization of the ordinary Wilson line. And in particular, you have actual terms corresponding to the scalar field in this n equals to vector multiplet. So as we said, it's simple to study land effects in a billing gauge theory. So could we exploit this fact to study land effects in the more complicated um, n equals two theories? So luckily for n equals two theories, it have a subspace of vacuum called the Coulomb branch. After you deform onto a point in the Coulomb branch, the low energy effective field theory is just some abelian gauge theories. And so what we could do is start with a supersymmetric land effects in the UV theory, and deform onto a point on the Coulomb branch and follow the defect into the infrared. And in the infrared, this land effects could be viewed as a composite land effects, which is a superposition of supersymmetric land effects in the abelian theory where the coefficients in this superposition is given by the so-called frame protected spin character, uh, which I will define momentarily. But before that, let me emphasize that this uh, PSC of frame protected spin character is equivalent to, equivalently defines you a UV IR map for your land effects, namely sending a UV land effects to, uh, a at a point on the Coulomb branch to this composite land effects retaining this as in the sum, where in the sum, each x gamma represents infrared wilson duft lines with charge gamma. Um, so to define this quantity from protected spin characters, we look at the Hilbert space of the theory with the insertion of the land effect. And moreover, since we're talking about a point on the Coulomb branch, so we fix the vacuum and infinity labeled by a point in the Coulomb branch. And what you find is that this Hilbert space decomposes into different super selection sectors labeled by infrared charges gamma. And the frame protected spin character name is simply a supersymmetric index counting the supersymmetric ground states within each sector gamma. And you're counting it with the actual data of spin. Namely, you could define this, this PSC by this following trace formula where here J3 and I3 are cartons for the spatial rotation and SU2R symmetry preserved by the land defects. And, uh, sorry, is there a question? Okay, uh, and then this Q here is a certain supercharge preserved by this land defect. Um, so in general, this index will take a form of certain Laurent polynomials in Q. So we could look at some simple example, uh, namely just consider n equals to pure SU2, um, n equals to pure SU2 super young males at the point in the weak coupling region of the Coulomb branch. And for, some, uh, for convenience of writing things down, we choose a basis of infrared electromagnetic charges. And then suppose we look at the Wilson line in the fundamental representation, then at this point in the weak coupling region, it could be written in terms of sum of three infrared land effects. And the first two terms labeled in blue uh, is in a sense consistent with a semi-classical thinking. Uh, namely at this point, your gauge group is broken to U1. So you would expect, and moreover this fundamental representation will be uh, split to uh, the sum of different weights in the representation. So you would expect to see such uh, infrared purely electrically charged land effects where the electric charge is corresponding to the weights of the fundamental representation. However, you do see this actual term uh, which could somehow interpret it as some bound state between some back BPS particle with a land. I'm not going into uh, details of that picture, but let me emphasize that in this business of getting this uh, protected spin characters or computing the UVIR map, um, the, the difficulties is always to get uh, this actual um, land, infrared land effects, which is not expected from a semi-classical analysis. Uh, similar, uh, yeah. uh, may I ask you, you know, you're implying that this kind of uh, composite states with the defects, they, they, they are kind of uh, massive ones or 
I mean, like uh, in N equal two, you can have say like monopoles with uh, mass which goes to zero, for example. So my impression is that what, what you are saying uh, that you are implying that those defects are kind of not, I mean, not not, not masses or, or at least I mean not not a big size, right? I mean, or uh, in uh, some way, because uh, yeah, I mean, to to view them as a point like particles or whatever defects. Oh, so so I I'm um, I'm I'm at a point in the weak coupling region, and yeah. I could view this actual thing as um, a bounding a bound state with some infrared land defects bounding with some um, back BPS particles. Yeah, right. So, so, the, the, but then in, in recoupling, it implies that no, okay, those, the, the, those objects are rather heavy, right? Essentially, I mean. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. What yeah. I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. yes, Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have another question. The the index on the previous slide is the yeah. sure index or? Uh, sure index. Um, how how do you compute it? Uh, I, I mean, so this is, first of all, this is the index in this um, defects Hilbert space. Yes. So uh, I, I will talk about how to compute it, but, but um, my will, you could compute this uh, index, for example, from the localization point of view, but um, that's not the approach I'm going to talk about here. And I, I think I don't really quite remember the sure index, like it looks like sure index, I guess. Uh, yeah. No, it's not. I, it's I, not. I'm, I see. Okay. So, so sorry, um, I haven't oh. thought of Asher index for a while. But um, they do I, compute it in as some kind of an S3 times S1 partition function in presence yeah. of a line defect? Or? Yes, yes. So, so you could think, yeah, I will mention later, you could think of it as a partition function S1 cross R3 with the line operator wrapping on the S1. Okay, so, but then I thought uh, the only index that uh, uh, that is consistent with preserving supersymmetry is the sure index in such a set of form. Uh, as I said, I'm I'm not okay. quite sure. Um, I um, I um, I mean, it is a well-defined index in the sense that uh, I didn't write down explicitly what this Q is, but this Q right. um, commutes with J3 plus S3. I so so I, I written it in a slightly different way. So I think a better way to write it as it should be like minus one to the two J3, where two J3 is the Fermi number and then Q to the 2J3 plus 2S3. Namely, this Q commutes with the diagonal subgroup of the rotation and the SU2R symmetry. I see, okay, uh, I see. And then on the next slide, you have this, uh, like you have this um, uh, coefficients in terms of sums of Qs, Q and Q minus one. They are computed using the, the index you, you written on the previous slide. Yes, yeah? exactly. So, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So the, the expansion of that index uh, truncates, like it's a finite, uh, when you compute it, it has yes, a... It, it's, a it's, yes, yes, it's a finite. So, so in, in particular, I, I didn't mention, so there is something called no exotics conjecture, mm -hmm. namely, um, which I think is not completely proven, namely, <clears throat> the states in this Hilbert space will always have trivial representation under the SU2R. So, so whatever you have, it's always going to be a SU2 character um, but in my convention, it will be in terms of minus Q. So namely, you see here, this is a character for a two-dimensional representation, which is minus Q minus Q inverse. And later on, I will show you other examples with higher dimensional representations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions at this point? Okay, so, so I'll introduce it. So later on, I will just call this quantity PSC is for uh, protected spin characters. And um, so there has been many work on exactly how to compute this quantity. For Lagrange series, you could use localization, some classical computation. For series or quiver tap, you could use quiver quantum mechanics. For class S series, you could use spectral networks, and the list goes on. And many people have worked on this topic. And today, I will describe a geometric way to compute this index but I will specialize for land defects in a large class or equals two series, namely series of class S. So let me give a, a short um, review on how do you get land defects in class S series. So um, 
in, in my context, I will only consider class S series coming from 60 to comma zero series of tap to GLN. So there's a way to decouple the GL1 factor to get the, the um, due to the SLN theories, but I will not describe this procedure in this talk. So anyway, so we consider 60 to comma zero serial type GLN on a Riemann surface times uh, the 40 space time with certain twisting. And after compactifying on the Riemann surface, you get a 40 equals two series of class S. And in particular, if you start with some supersymmetric surface defect in 60, wrapping some loop in the Riemann surface, which I drew here in blue, and also wrap the time direction. Then after the compactification, you will get half BPS land defects in 4D. And um, let me make a small remark that uh, in 6D, those supersymmetric surface defects are labeled by representations of GLN. And in this context, I'm talking about that we only consider the surface defects in fundamental representation. And then what does going to the infrared look like for a class S series? A point in the Coulomb branch corresponds to an unfold branch covering C tilde over C, where C tilde is a separate right hand curve. So here, I thought I drew this uh, covering in a local sense, and also I collapsed one of the dimensions for the Riemann surface C. Um, in the infrared, then the back theory is approximated by 62,0 theory of type GL1. Instead of on C, it's going to be on C tilde, sorry, on C tilde across the 40 space time. And the infrared land effects will similarly come from 60 surface defects in the abelian theory, wrapping certain loop L tilde, but now in C tilde and the time direction. So in this sense, this UVIR map that we are after is roughly speaking a map taking loops um, downstairs in C and map it to loops L tilde to in C tilde. And this is a geometrical way of thinking of this UVIR map, and it is what happens in the classical Q goes to one limit, and it's worked out by Gautam Moneski in the language of spectral networks. But you could ask the question of what, what about um, when Q is not equal to one? What about what happens for a generic Q? And to motivate uh, what we need to do there, um, let me talk about uh, 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 the, the OPE algebra of land effects. So when Q is generic, this, um, I, I defined this protective spin character in terms of trace formula earlier, but you could also think of it as, as, as I said a little bit earlier, as computing the partition function with, on S1 cross R3 with the supersymmetric land effects wrapping around the S1 circle and with actual twists by minus Q to the 2J3, Q to the 2 S3. And as a result, supersymmetric land effects have to sit along fixed axis in R3 which um, I denoted this axis in red, uh, purple, um, as RH. And the line, line defects has to sit at points along this axis. And as a result, when you, uh, when you consider the OPE limit of uh, bringing two line defects together, this OPE will be non-commutative because the two directions where one line defects approach the other will not be equivalent. And this OPE, we could denote it as a star product. And I should say it's a product, namely it is non-singular thanks to supersymmetry. Namely, um, the, 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 the translator, translation operator is Q exact, where Q is on supercharges preserved by the, the land effects here. So when you bring these two land effects together, you will get a new land effects, which we denote as L1 start with L2. So this means that this, when we think about the space of land defects, it's really um, in, equipped with this algebra structure where the, the multiplication is given by this non-commutative OPE. Uh, in the UV, this OPE is in general very complicated. In the infrared, this OPE is given by the so-called quantum torus, which is written here, where on the left-hand side, I see the OPE between two infrared land defects with charges gamma one, gamma two. And on the right hand side, you see a single land defect with charge gamma one plus gamma two, which is as expected because the, the charges should add um, additively. However, you also see this actual contribution, which takes care of the angular momentum of the electromagnetic field sourced by the two dions 
with charge gamma one and gamma two. By saying that, I'm thinking of this infrared lens affects the sword lens heavy dials. And in particular, this bracket in this, ex, um, in this exponent is the direct Schrodinger's quantic pairing. So as we said, that uh, when we think about land effects, it's important to take into account this non-commuted OPE. So if we want a UV to IR map, we should also uh, require this map to respect this OPE. So in class S series, we're lucky because those OPEs are described by the so-called skin algebras, which I will define momentarily. So this gives us a hint that the UV IR map is a map between the UV and the IR skin algebras. So, so all this um, thinking about OPEs and skin algebras uh, motivated us to consider the following setup, namely we're going to combine, sorry, we're going to combine the, this red RH axis with the Riemann surface to make a three manifold M, which is just simple product of the Riemann surface times RH. And instead of considering a loop on the Riemann surface, we're going to consider a link sitting inside this three manifold. So I drew st schematically um, this three, what this three manifold looks like. So you have RH directions, and at each slice of RH, you have the three mile surface. And in general, you could um, put a 60 surface operator wrapping some link, for example, this trivial knot uh, L3 here, um, and wrapping the time direction. So uh, this setup, of course, has been studied by many other people, but in various different contexts. For our purpose, uh, we could ask, what do we get? Um, for this setup in the 4D class S series. And it's a tricky thing to say because this link will have non-trivial extent along this RH directions where RH is one of the spatial um, directions in the 4D physics. Um, however, we want to argue that at long distances, this finite extent is negligible or suppressed and effectively we obtain some object which looks like a land effect in the 4D theory However, it partially breaks the total SO3 rotation symmetry to SO2 or U1 rotation symmetry. And moreover, it only preserves the U1R symmetry. So this is a sort of like kind of a new weird looking land effects in class S series. But I want to emphasize that this, uh, this setup also includes the setup to study the ordinary half BPS land effects which preserves the full rotation symmetry. Namely, if you consider a link which is isotopic to a loop um, at a fixed RH uh, coordinate, for example, this L1, L2 here, then you would recover the, the ordinary half BPS land effects. And the benefit for considering this link setup is to making contact with computational home play polynomials, which I will um, talk about um, momentarily. Okay, so, so we consider the space of such land effects and equip with their OPE structure. And this, this thing is described by the so-called GLN skin algebra of M, and it's, uh, it's defined as a space of formal linear combinations of framed oriented links in M up to isotopy with the uh, coefficient of linear combination being the Laurent polynomials in Q and modulo the following skin relations. And uh, in drawing these pictures, I must, the skin relations are certain operations that happens locally. So what you could think about is you cut a little three ball around some local pieces of the link strand, and then you keep everything outside the ball fixed, but only make um, very uh, only make modifications inside the three ball. So for example, the first relation says that um, the, the, these two configurations where the crossing, the handedness or crossing has changed differ by the third configuration where the crossing has been resolved multiplied with some factor Q minus Q inverse. And similarly, you could have um, these other relations. And in this skin algebra, the multiplication at the level of links is simply given by stacking the links in the RH direction. And then similarly, the infrared land effects um, also correspond to, the OPE algebra also correspond to some um, skin algebra, but it's a simpler version of, it's a simpler skin algebra um, defined on this covering manifold M tilde, which is a separate written curve times the real line. So in particular, skin relations are simple in the sense like, for example, if we still look at the first skin relation, here you could directly resolve this crossing at a fact, cost of factor Q or Q inverse, depending on the handedness of the crossing. 
So, and uh, I said earlier that the OP algebra for land defect, infrared land defects is the quantum towers. And now I give you a seemingly different looking definition for this uh, OP algebra. And I could prove that the scan algebra is indeed isomorphic to the quantum towers. However, we're not going to detail of that. Okay. So, yeah. And there is a question in the chat. Is it okay. true? But this skin algebra is always isomorphic uh, to some double affine Hecke algebra. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. Let me see. Um, is, is isomorphic to some W affine? Yeah, pr probably w. not. The double affine Hecke algebra usually arises from the 40n equals 2 star theory. If your curve is an elliptic curve, is, is a genus 1 curve with one marked point. Uh, Faye is just taking a general Riemann surface here. I don't see why it would be a double F on heck algebra. Maybe I didn't understand the question in chat. It's still going, but no, sorry, I don't. Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry, no, sorry I don't know. Uh, right, sorry. So I also have a naive question, um, oh. which is I, I thought you said the quantum torus was, was built from like kind of the usual line operators that I know and love. And now you're introducing this new kind of line operator where there's some spatial extension in this RH bar direction, as you call it. So should I be surprised that the skin algebra is still just the quantum torus as opposed to something bigger? It, it, it is supposed to be isomorphic to the quantum torus. Um, but basically, um, the way to think of lengths and how do you go between these two pictures is what I roughly wrote here. Namely, if you choose an infrared charge, which will correspond to some cycle on the first homology of the cyber return curve. And then you, you, you pick um, like a representative of the uh, corresponding class and then, then define that, uh, that, that class as X gamma. And then you could check that, um, for example, the, the stacking um, for the links at the level of the links is exactly given by the quantum towers. And to, to get to there, you need to use the fact that this DSZ pairing between the two infrared charges is interpreted in terms of intersection pairing in the H1 of the cyber return curve with integer co coefficients. Okay, gotcha, fair enough. It, it sounds like maybe it shouldn't have been like completely obvious to me a priori, but like you, no, it, 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 you checked it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So I didn't, of, it's described in our paper in, in a section, yeah. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, based on what I said so far, uh, so we want to construct this UVIR map, uh, namely um, at the, the, in the geometric point of view, we want a map uh, sending links L in the three manifold M to links L tilde in the three manifold, covering three manifold M tilde. And moreover, this F has to respect land effects OPE, so it has to be a homomorphism from the UV scan algebra to the simple infrared scan algebra. So how do we construct it? So in a perfect world, uh, this, the following what I'm going to say is going to be what we're supposed to do to construct this map. This map. So namely, we're going to use this picture of thinking of this um, protected spin character as com com computing the partition function with a land defect insertion. And moreover, we're going to think it in the following sense, namely we compactify the time direction and again, introducing the twist by minus Q to the 2J3 times Q to the 2I3. And after reducing our circle, the reduced theory is effectively a twisted and omega deformed 5D equals 2 UN superior mills on the three manifold M times the spatial R2 plane, where the omega deformation is turned on along this R2 plane. And moreover, you have insertion of a fundamental Wilson line along the link in M. And um, moreover, since we're considering a point on the Coulomb branch, so the theory is put in background, which generically breaks the UN to U1 to the N. And this breaking is determined by the covering M tilde over M. And in a sense, you could think of the different sheets of the covering correspond to eigenvalues of the web of the corresponding adjunct scalar in the 5D equals 2 superior mill theory. So theoretically, you could compute um, FLL uh, as a partition function of the n equals two superior mills in this above background, and then somehow expand it in terms of partition function of the infrared um, abelian superior mill theory with infrared Wilson line insertions, and then extract the coefficients in front of this, um, you know, in front of each term of, of this expansion. So that, then you could get the, the, the frame protective spin character. 
However, we did not um, um, carry out this computation in this method. Uh, we, uh, what we do is something in between. So we combine the biophysical picture with certain bootstrap methods. Uh, why do I call it bootstrap? I will talk about it later. So concretely, our construct, uh, construction of this map um, consists of two steps. So the step one is you enumerate all possible links in the covering three manifold M tilde, which is again um, the several written curve across the real line, and consisting of local pieces. And the step two is that to each of this L tilde, you are going to assign a factor which takes value in some Laurent polynomials in Q. And this factor is also built up of, as a product of local factors. So step one, how do we enumerate these links? So basically, we're going to look at the local pieces of the following two kinds. So the first kind follows from the semi-classical analysis. Locally, away from the branch points of this covering manifold, un is broken into u1 to the n. And moreover, the fundamental representation of un is decomposed into its n spaces, weight spaces corresponding to the n sheets of this covering. Um, so that then from the same classical point of view, we would expect the fundamental Wilson line decomposes locally into n Wilson lines of the u1 to the n theories. And that's the level of the operation of the links. What you do is literally you take a local strand of a link um, downstairs in M and map it to its n pre images under this covering map. Um, namely, this, uh, for, for each sheet i, you will get a local strand traveling on the sheet i. So this is a naive picture. And of course, you need to correct this um, naive and classical thinking. So namely, you need to um, include corrections or instantly corrections for massive W bosons. And the W bosons are in this picture of the covering. They're labeled by the two sheets of I and J because they're in the i general representation. And um, moreover, um, I'm not going to details of that, but uh, the BPS condition determines that the W boson have to travel along certain fixed um, IJ trajectories on the Riemann surface. It's just some one dimensional trajectories on the Riemann surface. So for example, for N equals two, the W boson could travel to or from a branch locus of this current map. And moreover, they could also be exchanged between two different strands of the link L. So, um, at the again, at the level of operational links, suppose you have a link L intersecting of a potential intersect with a potential W boson trajectory, which ends at a branch point, then upstairs, you're allowed to add this little detour term, which goes from sheet I to sheet J. And similarly, for this exchange term, suppose you have two strands of the link intersect with the same, with the same W, with, with certain uh, W boson trajectory, then upstairs, you're allowed to Add these little two, um, two um, little local strands going along different directions, one on sheet i, the other on sheet j. So for n equals two, this is the whole story. But for n bigger than two, then the whole thing will become really complicated. And um, that's also why uh, this whole bit, this whole project is not done yet. Um, so anyway, so so the, um, Recap is the step one. You, you just enumerate all possible links L tilde built out of these two basic local pieces. And then step two, for each link L tilde, you assign a weight factor. And then um, there, there should be a better way to determine these weight factors. But in, in practice, we determine these weight factors using the constraints that this UVIR map has to preserve skin relations on both sides. And moreover, it has to be isotopy invariant. Um, so I will not go into any detail of those weight factors because it's going to be a pen. But uh, let me just mention that in particular for web trajectory of W bosons um, with certain legs attached to either the link strand or the branch point, they contribute a weight factor of uh, some prefactor times Q minus Q inverse to certain power. And in particular, this, this factor vanishes as Q goes to one. So it vanishes in the classical limit. Uh, so in practice, how do we determine, you know, because uh, um, this, for example, I showed you a possible web trajectories, which has four legs, but in principle, you could have really complicated thing. So what's a basic strategy for determining these factors? So this could be determined in a reductive way using this isotopy invariance constraints, and it has to be done by a computer. So here I'm showing you a simple example of what uh, this looks like for a four-legged web. 
So in this, on the figure in, on the left hand side, I, I, it's, it's some cropped version of what happens for a link. So namely, those blue strands labeled by like chain I sec zero are just some strands of the link. And then this green here is a place where a W boson web could happen and could attach to the link. And now um, I'm going to make a local isotopy move where namely I drag this chain one sec zero um, closer close to the, um, sorry, not close, like towards the direction of this inner vertex of this four-legged web. And then afterwards, I get the picture on the right-hand side, namely after I drag it over to this um, inner vertex, you will see this four-legged web is killed. And instead you get a bunch of three-legged web and then two-legged webs or exchanges. So, and then, but on the other hand, the result should be the same before and after the isotopy. So this move gives you some equality, which relating the web factors for the four legged webs with the web factors with less, uh, le less number of webs. So in this way, you could um, fix the, the, the web factors in a certain reductive way by just simply reducing the number of legs. Uh, may I ask you at yeah. this point, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, because in terms of, uh, say, uh, monopoles and dyes, you can view W boson as, uh, as say, combination of monopole and, and dyne, right? For example, uh, with opposite magnetic charges. So when you're writing this double connection, I'm thinking whether it's related to this structure that W boson could be understood as, you know, a uh, uh, combination of two fundamental uh, dyes, uh, or, or it's not related. Um, so first of all, I'm talking about W boson in the 5D equals 2 superior male theory. Um, right, but, uh, but monopoles and di uh, yes, lines are um, there. But I, um, so may maybe, maybe let me say I, I don't, um, I would love to have a physical interpretation of these yeah. factors, but I, um, I don't know. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, sorry. sorry. But, um, because you see, it reminds uh, very much that that if I would view uh, this um, uh, W boson as combination of mo monopole and dion with uh, opposite magnetic charge, right, then it would okay. be like W boson, right, in terms of charges. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, and then I'm looking at your picture, and that's why I'm asking. Okay, I'm sorry. No, Arkady, I can tell you something that I think um, you would like, but I. Um, which is related, not exactly the answer to this question, but um, I could tell you at the end of the talk. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, okay, so, so, so far I, I've described this map, but mostly from the point of view of constructing, computing the protected spin characters for this new weird looking kind of land effects in class S series. But there's a very nice feature of this construction, namely, it also computes a familiar link invariant, namely, it computes this particular one parameter limit of the Hongfli polynomial for the link, uh, with some uh, attribute factor depending on the self-linking number of the link. So in particular for n equals two, this gives you the Jones polynomial, so our constructing that context will reproduce the so-called vertex model for computing Jones polynomials. For and bigger than two, this really is a new method to compute the home fully polynomials. And let me mention that um, uh, here, um, you know, the statement is when m equals r three computes home fully, but it also works if you really consider m as a Riemann surface cross r. Namely, this m tilde will have some non-trivial branching structure, but suppose you still put the link l, uh, which is um, confined in a three ball inside the C cross R, then you would still get the home fully polynomial. So, um, of course, it intuitively it should work because, um, you know, locally it looks like R3 in that case, but um, in actual computation, you will get lots of cancellations which coming from those um, certain, you know, the, the, the W boson corrections from various direct um, trajectories. So, so it's non trivial to say that it actually works in that case. Okay, so let me just so, show you a simple example um, in m equals r3, and moreover, n equals two, so m tilde is just two disconnect, disjoint unions of r3. And in this case, um, there's only one BPS trajectories, which I marked in the gray lines here, and then moreover, we take l to be the simplest thing possible, which is an on knot. And I draw two projections to show you how I place this on knot in r3. Namely, in the one-two projection is just a little loop. 
and then in the two three projection, it's this kind of figure eight on not um, configuration, and then we could work out um, the um, the lifts of L to this um, disjoint union of R three, and the first two are not surprising, namely they're just direct uh, lifts of L to the two different sheets of M tilde. Let's say this this component is called sheet one, this component called sheet two. But then the third left con, um, contains some non-trivial contribution from a W boson exchange. Namely, you see there, and I marked the place where this exchange happens um, in the one-two projection using this black line, and then in the two-three projection happens near this uh, crossing point. And namely, you could you, you could see that uh, there were there are two actual short strands which travel on sheet one, sheet two, opposite directions. And you, you are afraid to add it to this original link uh, on not configuration. And then you could work out the contributions from each three, each one of the three lifts. And then, then it just sum up to the Jones polynomial. So this is a simple example. But moreover, you could consider a very complicated examples. For example, um, you take n equal three, namely m tilde is like a disjoint union of three copies of R3. And then there will be um, many different kinds of web trajectories that could occur. And again, you could compute everything using a computer gram and then check that um, the, the, you still get the, the, this, this um, higher Jones polynomial or this one parameter limit of home free polynomial. And then let me just quickly go through another example which are relevant in the computational protective spin characters for SU2 with four flavors. So namely, we take the Riemann surface to be a four puncture sphere and then we, and, also, in this particular example, we go to a point in the strong coupling region where the separation curve is given as follows. And then I also draw this four puncture sphere here where the punctures are labeled in blue dots here. And then the, the uh, BPSIG trajectories are also drawing um, black and gray lines there. So first we consider the two uh, half BPS land defects in the ordinary sense, which has been, which has um, in the classical limit has been studied uh, many times before. Um, for example, we look at this link L1. This corresponds to a fundamental Wilson line in certain duality frame. And then if you compute what's this, uh, what does it look like in the infrared, it's an expansion in seven infrared land defects, always coefficient to one. So you don't have, so, so namely the, the spin of the frame of the BPS states for this land effects is al always trivial here. And this also consistent with the classical computation, for example, done before by GMN. And then we could also look at different half BPS land effects, which is represented by this link L2 here. And by the way, so here I am only drawing the projection to the Riemann surface, but really you, could, you should think of it as a link living on the Riemann surface across the real line. So in this case, you will have many, many terms and you will have BPS states with non-trivial spin. For example, if I look at this charge sector um, labeled by gamma, then we could see that the, the BPS states form a four-dimensional representation which would direct some of the one-dimensional and the three-dimensional representation onto the rotation group. And you geometrically, these four terms comes from um, you know, certain, link, certain lips of this uh, uh, link out downstairs to upstairs. Uh, we could also consider examples on this new kind of land effects it wield uh, from the projection to the Riemann surface. What you will see is they will have some crossing here. Um, so anyway, then you, you could also compute the, the uh, infrared expansion for this new kind of land effects. So, so far I have talked about um, the, this um, construction for three manifold taking the former Riemann surface across the real line one could ask what happens for a more general three manifold. And uh, we, we could still starting um, to use the SIGT point of view. So namely you reduce the SIGT theory with surface defect on M and that gives you a 3D equals two theories with certain land defect insertion. And one could also consider to make a perturbation which is labeled by a 3D cyber written curve or certain branch covering M tilde over M and under which the back theory also flow, uh, flows to a Lagrange theory in the infrared. So one could still ask a similar question, how does a UV land defects decompose in terms of infrared land defects? So here this UV IR map should go, instead of between skin algebras, it should just go from between, uh, to be a map between skin modules because you lose this uh, product structure, so there's no way to define this algebra um, for, for the um, stack, using stacking of links. 
So for n equals two, namely in the GL2 series, our construction could be formulated in a covariant way. Uh, for n bigger than two, it also seems possible. And here by covariant, I mean this formulation doesn't care too much of the fact that the three manifold takes this product structure. So in principle, our construction should be extendable to three manifolds, uh, the mating tetrahedron triangulations. However, you need to um, add some new ingredients. In particular, in this case, the current three manifold M tilde has a new kind of singularity correspond to each tetrahedron of the triangulation. Physically, uh, one way to think of this kind of singularity is if you view this 3D theory as a domain wall between two boarding n equals two class S series, then this new kind of singularity could be thought of as the BPS particles from in the 4D theory get trapped at the 3D domain wall. And, but to accommodate this kind of new singularity, we need some extra skin relations in this abelian skin module. So I've just drawn here schematically, here this uh, purple loop is this new singularity. So the skin relation is the equality between this uh, left-hand side and this blue, blue um, strand here is some um, strand of the link here. And then the skin relation is just the equality between the, the configuration on the left and then the two configurations on the right. So, okay, so now let me talk about uh, what we could possibly do with this um, UVR map I've been um, describing. So one way, uh, one application is it could uh, be used to study back BPS spectrum with spin. Namely, I have been surprising a fact that um, this UVR map really depends on this covering map or depends on where you are on the Coulomb branch. And as you move on the Coulomb branch, this F could change discontinuously. And moreover, this um, discontinuous change is controlled by the BPS spectrum of the bug theory. Physically, this is understood by thinking of the BPS states um, of the land effects. Um, they could uh, decay at, this, uh, at certain locus uh, of the Coulomb branch into the back BPS particles. And for example, across a wall corresponding to this BPS hypermatic plates with charge gamma, then this map F will uh, jump by conjugation of the quantum dialogarism. And similarly, if, you're, um, if, if your 4D BPS particle correspond to BPS vector multiplet, then this jump will be different. So thinking backwards, if we study FL, uh, this UVR map before and after the jump, we could extract information about the back BPS spectrum with spin. And mathematically, this is also interesting because it's relevant to the study of so-called Motivic Donaldson and Thomas invariants. So the second application is that we could use this UVR map to study representations of skin algebra. Namely, it's a simple reason because this F takes this complicated looking GLN skin algebra to the simple looking quantum towers. So one could construct representations of the GLN scale algebra simply by pulling back simple representations of the quantum towers. So what um, a nice feature happens when Q is a root of unity. So in this case, one could construct finite dimensional representations. And this has been worked out by uh, mathematicians, uh, Bonohan and Wang. And one could ask the question of, can we realize such representation in a physical way? So the conjecture is that those representations are the space of ground states of class S theory on the so-called Melvin space, which is R2 bundle over a circle, um, with certain boundary condition at infinity corresponding to a point in the Hitchin modular space or equivalently the modular space of the class S theory compact field circle. So one big ingredient, one important ingredient in this construction is the fact that when Q is a root of unity, skin algebra has a huge center and it's so huge that it's isomorphic to the algebra functions on this uh, 3D module space. So how do you think of this uh, central element physically? So there's a nice geometric picture here. So I told you before that at generic Q, the line operators has to be um, inserted sitting at a fixed axis, um, which I, I draw it here again with this uh, red axis R. And I also draw the transverse R2 plane here. So, but then when Q is a, uh, say case, I'm uh, sorry, Q is a root of unity, um, this doesn't have to be the case because if you look at the, uh, what happens in this um, transverse plane, which I, I use a complex form in Z. So 
this, uh, one could consider line operators which wrap this as one factor for k times. And then if you look at what happens uh, at this transverse R2 plane, they will sit at, or the trajectory of this line will be some discrete, evenly distributed points on this uh, R2 plane. And in particular, it, it doesn't have to be sitting at the equal zero, and you could deform it as far as away as you want. So as a result, you could defer these uh, this kind of longer line operators um, to pass or um, pass over each other, and more, moreover, pass over these uh, other line operators, which has to be sitting at the equal zero when and they wrap the circle just for one times. So in the um, anyway, so so this this kind of central element are important to um, the setup to study these uh, spun, uh, space or ground states. Um, in, in the sense that uh, the boundary condition are going to be specified for the on um, the web of line operators wrapping on this longer circle, or in other words, web of the central line operators. Um, okay, so in the last nine minutes, I will um, get to the, the third topic in my title, which is uh, exact WKB. Um, so in our construction of this UVIR map, we have um, effectively turned on half omega background around along a spatial R2 plane. On the other hand, there is a, a orthogonal line development uh, in that WKB analysis and non-perpetrates um, to the quantization of separate written curves in n equals two series. And in that context, one also turns on half omega background. So it's tempting to ask whether uh, one could combine the two stories by turning on the full omega background. So let me just uh, diverge to, um, to talk about a slightly different topic, uh, namely the exact WKB for the equals two gauge series. So um, there has been really uh, many interesting developments recently on relations between quantum mechanical systems and supersymmetric gauge theories. And I cannot really uh, put all the references there. And the central piece there is the following complex Schrodinger equation, and also it's higher analog. Um, so there are different point of views to study the Schrodinger equation, and um, traditionally one could explore uh, the exact WKB method to study solutions for the Schrodinger equation and its associated monotony data. And geometrically, it's been reformulated using the language of so-called abelianization. And um, this is one aspect. Another aspect is being a Schrodinger equation when study, one could study spectral problems in quantum mechanics corresponding to different potentials. And uh, the third aspect is in the gauge theory point of view. And this Schrodinger equation could be viewed as quantization separate and curve in certain four equals two gauge theories, or equivalent, you could think of it as deformation of um, the carrier ring relation for surface defects where the half omega background is turned on along the surface defect directions. And um, the central player which ties together all the different point of view is the so-called Warhol symbol. Um, so in abelianization language, it's, def uh, it's just defined as a holonomial some abelian connection along, uh, along certain cycle gamma, which correspond to some infrared charges. And it could be computed by different methods. And the fact that um, different methods will give you a consistent result is uh, the beauty of the exact WKB story. So for example, it's given by borrow resummation of the WKB periods or quantum periods. And uh, if you call quantum periods the same, um, the formal series before you do the resummation. Um, or you could be written in terms of ratios or round skins of certain distinguished local solutions to the Schrodinger equation. And uh, from a gauge theory point of view, it could be computed by instanton calculus. And the last point of view is what I've um, diverged a little bit into, namely, it could be computed by certain TBA-like integral equations, which is this complicated looking thing. Uh, I will not um, talk about the details of this equation, but just explain some terminology here. So here, Z gamma is a central charge, where gamma is um, the infrared charge. Um, the electromagnetic flavor chart. And then this uh, omega mu here is an integer counting BPS states with charge mu. And moreover, this integral is along certain half array um, in the H bar plane with this interesting looking log factor in the integrand. So solution of the integral equation in particular solves certain Riemann-Hilbert problem 
where this integrand here indeed encode the jumping behavior of this virus symbol across certain uh, BPS cable, namely certain wall corresponding to the 40 BPS particle. And the question, one question one could ask is whether there is a Q-deformed version of this integral equation. So um, this, this integral equation I'm showing you is sort of like a special limit of a different kind of look, um, integral equation. And I will talk about the, um, the steps one need to take to, to get the Q-deformed version of integral equation in that context. So namely, uh, the previous integral equation is a conformal limit of a different kind of integral equation obeyed by a quantity chi gamma labeled by zeta. And one could try to introduce Q-deformation there because there's a physical interpretation for this, uh, this uh, chi gamma zeta. Namely, if you reduce class S0 on circle, they correspond to the valve of the infrared line defects, which we have been calling X gamma, where um, recall that in the, the second slide also, I defined this uh, zeta to be the parameter controlling what supercharges are preserved by this infrared line defects. And then this integrals in the TBA equation will simply represent corrections to the semi-classical web computation in the effective abelian theory. So now we could ensure, given that this, this quantity chi gamma zeta is related to the infrared line defects, then we could uh, introduce Q deformation by what we, um, we have, been, have been doing, namely by turning on half a background along certain spatial R2 plan. Then the, again, the infrared line defects will uh, based on non-cumulative OPE, which is a uh, quantum torus here. So this tells you that the integral equation we want should be certain operator equation for these quantities x gamma zeta, which respect this quantum torus relation. And moreover, the integrand also should produce the jumping behavior by conjugation of certain quantum dialogarism. So for generic Q, this um, seems, again, rather difficult, but simplification happens again when Q is the root of unity. Um, namely, as I talked about a couple of slides earlier, there we were trying to say that the space of ground states of the 40 series on the Melbourne space is finite dimensional. And in particular, we could explicitly write down these um, infrared line operators in certain matrix representation and then try to formulate the integral equations for individual matrix entries, where it just reduces to what the ordinary integral equation would look like. Um, so this works in the simplest possible example, however uh, much is still uh, need, needed to be done. So this is still a work in progress. So let me summarize. Uh, we have constructed a link invariant where this uh, UVIR map, this construction unifies computation of uh, Homefully polynomials with the computation of BPS states with spin for land defects in class S series. And this construction could have both physical and mathematical applications and also possibly useful for a Q deformed version of the TBA equation or for an extension of the traditional exact WKB method in the 40 equals 2 theories. So that's all I have to say. Thank you and I hope everyone stay healthy. Thank you very much, Faye, for the very interesting talk. So everybody can unmute themselves and clap or use some other methods. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Can I ask just to make sure I understand how everything fits together? Yeah. Um, if you knew the data of the framed protected spin characters, uh, would that be enough to be able to calculate these Homfly polynomials, all these invariants that you've introduced for these knots? It's the one parameter limit of this Homfly polynomials. Uh, sorry, just remind me again what, what. Sorry. Just remind me again what the limit was. Oh yeah. Um, so it's a limit which is like a higher uh, analog of Jones polynomial. Um, yeah, so namely you said A to Q to the N and Z equals to Q minus Q inverse. Oh, oh, okay, I see. So, so you're saying if I know the protected spin characters, the frame protected spin characters, then I can compute this uh, link of pair. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and it just, it, it, it seems roughly, and you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that it, it's probably easier to compute like this particular link invariant using Absolutely. the... Yes. 
Uh, yes, uh, I, I should say, uh, I see this is a new method and of course it looks awfully complicated. So, so um, just from the computation value, it's, it's not like an improvement for the purpose of computing the homophily polynomial. But my point is this, this construction really unifies the point of view of computing homophily polynomials with computing this frame BPS states with spin for land defects in class S series. Right, so I, I was just wondering if, if you start with the computation of Homfley polynomials or the analogs, can you reverse the flow of logic and use that to get computations of the frame protected spin characters? Would that, that would be, uh, that would be um, great, but I, I don't think so. Uh, essentially because um, the thing that ties together these two point of view is um, literally this um, web things I've been talking about. And I don't think that for, especially for n bigger than two, I don't think that kind of uh, object actually turns up in the traditional computation of home field polynomials. So, I see. Um, yeah, uh, but that would be great if, if one could reverse, you know, the traditional computation of home field polynomial and then somehow cook up a way to compute the frame protected spin cap. Okay, cool. Thank yeah. you. Uh, may I ask you about uh, uh, spin? Uh, say, uh, let, let's say that we are talking about, say, um, bound state of two. Uh, to to BPS states, right? Say, like the, some, you know, say uh, again, kind of same, some dyan, uh, two two two, uh, two uh, state bound states of two dyans, uh, for example. Okay, then uh, yeah, in this way, there is a ground state in this step, and you know, there is kind of it is super, super multiplet with particular spin structure, right? I mean, okay, then you can consider, say, I don't know, a, a kind of uh, states with non-zero non angular momentum, for example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which would be, generically would be probably higher than, you know, those with zero angular momentum or whatever. I mean, uh, so it would be some structure. So, so it, it is your approach would allow to consider this kind of uh, high angular momentum as well, or, uh, and would, would it be also be PS states? I'm not sure whether they are asking, you know, relevant question, but you, you see probably what I'm talking about. Um, I, um, let, let me say what I think. Uh, then maybe you could say whether this is uh, what you're talking about. So, so this, this counting of these frame protected spin characters, it captures the, the, the ground state. Of, so or I think you're talking about the excited bound states, but yeah. those are not counted by this index. This index I really see. counts the ground states, the lowest. Okay, but, but in, you are saying that it is this, uh, Stays with spin, but it is something beyond uh, normal supersymmetric structure because you have super multiple there are certain spins there, right? But but uh, but uh, and those ground state will be particular one, right? I mean, yes, yes, be, yes. Those will I be see. short representations. Yes. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask a question. <clears throat> yeah. Um, at the end of the talk, you were, you were mentioning this uh, Q-deformed integral equation. Uh -huh. And uh, in the math literature, there is already something like that uh, in the paper by Barbieri and Bridgeland yes. and Silva. And I wonder if your thing uh, like extends that or, or overlaps with that at all. Yeah, so, so uh, that's a great point. So, so um, of course, so you, you could think of this um, so first of all, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I think in that literature, um, they did not try to con construct an integral, a Q-deformed version of the integral equation. Rather, they formulated a Q-deformed version of the Riemann Hilbert problem and then gave a solution in some example. That's right. So, so um, this way I'm talking about here is trying to construct a solution to the same kind of Q-deformed Riemann Hilbert problem, but through some, some Q-deformed integral equation, roughly speaking. So what are the examples for which you're studying this? It, it's, it's the same example that uh, Barberi, um, Bridgeland, Stoppa has studied, um, which, okay. is, which is an example of a simple hypermetric. Well, well we, we'd like to, I mean, in principle, it should exist for any class S theory. And we yes. are Definitely, we're definitely think, looking at that um, Barbieri stuff up Bridgeland uh, Q deformed Riemann Hilbert problem as a as a guiding example. 
that that thing I think is not really associated with class as theory, though, right? No, sure it is. Sure it is. It's yeah. A, it's, it, yeah it's a, it's a very simple, very very simple one actually. Okay. Um, so, so I should say it, it is simple in the context of physics, but um, so to construct solutions. Yes, 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 yes. It's like one hypermultiplet or something. It, it's. Um, it, it's a single hypermultiplet. It's formulated in terms of a quiver. Well, it's the A1 quiver. An A1 quiver, yeah, right, but that's related. I don't know if you consider that to be class S. I, well, uh, no, it's, it's real, but you can also get at this from a, a simple class S theory, I think. It's a U1 theory with one hypermultiplet or something. Okay. Uh, excuse me, so can I give uh, one related question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so maybe, so uh, you mentioned some relation between WK, w, WKB and uh, uh, this X gamma. Uh, is there any interpretation of your Q deformed version of uh, X gamma from some Schrodinger type of equation or some WKB? Yeah, yeah, so that's a great question. So, so, I, I, so first of all, the, um, maybe I should say, so uh, I lost that. So this, um, this integral equation I'm studying is not the integral equation that appearing in this Schrodinger problems. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, one could also um, think of this integral equation as coming up in exact WKB analysis, not for Schrodinger operators or opers, or rank one opers, but instead for flat connections. And in that context, um, it, it's not later the Schrodinger equation because you also need, need to solve the H chain equation, which is a PDE instead of ODE. So, um, but but I think one could uh, incorporate this, you know, this version of this integral equation in the exact WKB analysis for, for flat connections, but I do not know like a direct application to the exact WKB analysis for the Schrodinger operators. But however, one thing I, I which we are hopeful is once we know the QD form version for this uh, bigger integral equation, we could still take this, uh, try to take some sort of conformal limit and then get uh, literally a QD form integral equation in the context of exact WKB analysis for shielding the equations. So that, that could be a hope. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you. And maybe it might be different from some WKB analysis of QD different equation. Uh, Sorry, say it again. Sorry. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that maybe it is not uh, some WKB analysis of Q difference equation. You mean Q difference equation? So I. Um, so maybe, yeah, some people were working in some uh, WKB analysis of Q difference equation, and I just wondering, I'm just uh, wondering some relation between your Q deformed version. Yeah, so, so let me say, I do not know, but I, I think that Q difference equation um, somehow comes from the 5D physics instead of this setup I've been studying. So, so it might have some relation, but I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah thank you very much. So if there are no more questions, let's thank uh, Faye again for the excellent talk. And uh, I will stop the recording. And if people want to, uh, to stay and uh, discuss, uh, you're welcome uh, uh, to do so. Thank you. Thank you.